The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. What is repentance? A turning away from sin, and at the same time it is a turning back to Almighty God, God who created us and who loves us. It is more than just regretting what we've done or being ashamed of what we've done. And definitely it's more than being sorry that we got caught. Repentance is a turning of the heart where we really want and make efforts to change. We see an example of that in the people of Nineveh who believed the word of God proclaimed by Jonah and repented in sackcloth and ashes fasting for three days from bread and water in sorrow for their sins. It's not really effective for us simply to say or to think, I'll stop doing this, this particular sin. It's important for us to look at the roots of sin in our lives. There are seven sins that are the root sins that underlie everything else. They're called the seven capital sins. They are attitudes or patterns of thought that lead us into actual freely chosen sins that fall under the umbrella of those capital sins. It's important for us if we really want to repent, we really want to change, to address and reject those thoughts that are at the root that help us, that helps us to stop our sins. So when we have thoughts that are, for example, materialistic or too pleasure centered on food or on sexuality or something else, if we let those thoughts go, we will begin to desire those things. And if we continue to think about those desires, we will inflame a passion, an ardent desire to do something about it. And that passion will lead us into sin. So if we address it at the first thought, and we work at changing those patterns of thinking at the very beginning, it can help us to break down the habits of sin in our lives. Now in the Fathers of Mercy examination of conscience, in the back part, which a lot of people don't look at, we have the seven capital sins. They're listed under the column called the way of darkness or sin. And there's a little explanation of each one. Now this is just an explanation in a nutshell. You could probably spend a page on each one of them but we tried to boil it down to what are these capital sins. And in the column next to it, under the way of light or holiness, we have the seven capital virtues, the seven virtues that directly oppose those capital sins. So if we see that we're struggling with a particular capital sin, we can look at the virtue, and they're actually in direct parallel. Number one virtue, corresponds to number one capital sin, etc. And we work at growing those virtues, beginning to put a new pattern of thinking, a habit of behavior into our lives, and it helps us to begin to overcome our patterns of sin. For example, pride has to do with being egocentric, being all about ourselves, wanting to be great, but in the things of this world, rather than the things of God. So to overcome pride, we have to grow humility, which is a littleness of spirit, a being simple, recognizing God is great and we are nothing. We are simply his creatures, children that he loves, but in comparison to God, we're nothing. And when we can be completely happy and at peace with our littleness, it helps us to begin to overcome pride in our lives. And we can do this with each of the capital sins. True repentance and ongoing conversion come, Pope St. John Paul II tells us, and are sustained by rediscovering God as Father of mercies. 
when we rediscover the Father of mercy and we discover that he is mercy itself, that God who is love goes out to us as mercy. And we discover that the Lord Jesus is our truest lover, the one who loved us so much that he suffered the passion and cross precisely to save us, not just to save all of humanity, but to save each and every one of us. It is when we discover God in his love that we can begin to love him more, to fall more and more in love with him. And as we foster and grow that love within us, it helps us to be motivated to continue that conversion, to continue every day to strive to overcome our sins and to grow in the virtues. How do we foster and grow in this love for God? By reflecting on his goodness, by thinking about God and who he is, all the good that he does, has done for us, and especially by reflecting on his love in the passion of our Savior. The more that we reflect on our Lord's passion, the more we reflect on his love for us and what he underwent out of love for us, the more we fall in love with him. Now the scariest situation that there is spiritually is a person who believes that they have no need of repentance. In my over 20 years as a priest, I've come across one or two people like that. People who were convinced that they had never ever committed a sin in their life, that they had nothing to repent of. But a lot of us, a lot of us have the seeds of that attitude, maybe not that full extent. But Pope Pius XII said a long time ago, and blessed Paul VI repeated it, that the greatest sin of modern times is the loss of the sense of sin. When we begin to lose the sense of our own brokenness and our need for God and that our sins really are sins, we fall into that greatest sin of modern times. St. John in his epistle addressed that when he said, if we say we have no sin, we are liars and the truth is not in us. And our Lord Jesus says he is the truth. And so if we deny that we are sinners, Christ is not in us. We have to be truthful and honest for him to dwell within us. One of the early church fathers, St. Caesarius of Arles, said, No sinner is, in, is more in need of the tears of others than the one who thinks he has nothing to weep for. So my brothers and sisters, a deep, daily, ongoing repentance should be part of our lives, should pervade our lives. Every day, turning from sin, turning to the God who loves us, seeking to break the patterns of thought and behavior that take us away from God, and to put on new patterns of thinking and behavior that draw us closer to God each day, growing in those seven capital virtues. And when we do this, when we have this real repentance in our lives, this should lead us to want to bring the message of Jesus to others, as Jonah did, as Peter and Andrew and James and John answered their call. So you and I are called. Now there is nobody out there who is still alive, who our Lord is not calling to repentance. Sometimes we might think that somebody is beyond reach. I'd like to share with you a story from the venerable Frank Duff, the founder of the Legion of Mary. Somebody asked Frank Duff if he had ever met someone that he thought was beyond hope, that they were too far gone. And after thinking for a little while, he said, yes, maybe one. That very day, he went down into the red light district of Dublin because the Legion of Mary was doing an apostolate 
trying to convert all the prostitutes and to shut down prostitution in Dublin. And as he's walking along, one of the prostitutes sitting on a porch calls out to him and says, Mr. Duff, and he stopped. You think I'm beyond hope, don't you? He said, frankly, yes, I do. And she said, that's good enough for me. Take me to that house for the reformed prostitutes. I'm leaving this life now. No one is beyond hope. Not you, not me, no one. May that spirit of ongoing conversion motivate us to change our own lives and to seek to bring that mercy of God to others. God love you.